accounts receivable. That's when your customers charge their sales, uh, saying that they're going to pay you later, right? So let's take a look a, a bit more at the accounts receivable account. Specifically, it's anatomy. We know since it's an asset account, it's increased by debits and decreased by credits. It has a beginning balance that's a debit balance. That's the customers who owe you money still at the beginning of the year. Whenever we make a sale, we know the entry is debit accounts receivable, credit sales for whatever the sales are on account. Uh, the only things that reduce the accounts receivable account is when your customers pay you the cash that they owe you. So cash collections will reduce accounts receivable. Another way that this account can be reduced is if the customer says, oh, I don't want it, and they take it back. So in other words, you have to take it out of accounts receivable and out of sales because it was a sales return. The final way that accounts receivable can be reduced is very sad. It's when the customer is a deadbeat and doesn't pay you and you have to write off the account as a bad debt or an uncollectible account or a doubtful account. Those are all interchangeable terms. So what we do when we have a write-off, and this is the new entry this chapter, is we will debit allowance for doubtful accounts and credit accounts receivable. That's to write off a specific customer as never going to pay us. So it's what I like to call the country western song. It's, um, I wrote them off my books, but there's still a black spot in my heart. So there's still a black spot. We don't like that particular customer, but we had to write them off because they're never going to pay us. So all of a sudden now, you hear that we've got this new account called Allowance for Doubtful Accounts, Allowance for Uncollectible Accounts, or Allowance for Bad Debts. Uh, you pick what you want to call it. What this account does is it sets up an estimate or um, a pool of, I know bad things are going to happen to me in the future, I just don't know who's going to do me wrong. So every period, we're going to have an adjusting journal entry to estimate the amount of bad debts we have based either upon the sales we made during the period or based upon an aging of our accounts receivable. So this will be our estimate of who's going to do us wrong in the future. So because that entry is always debit bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts, that adjusting entry always shows up as a credit, doesn't it? So we'll have a beginning balance that's a credit balance. We'll have the adjusting entry. We have the specific write-offs of the particular customers who do us wrong to come up with our ending balance. Now at this point you're saying, well, what kind of account is allowance for doubtful accounts? Well, it's an asset account, but as you can see, it's balance is always opposite of most assets, so it's called a contra asset account. Contra or contrary asset, meaning it has the opposite balance than you'd expect. So credit balance, whereas all other asset accounts have debit balances, don't they? So uh, how this shows up on your balance sheet is you'll show accounts receivable, and then immediately after it, will be the allowance for doubtful accounts. I always call it like the shadow account. You look right behind accounts receivable and there's a shadow. Who isn't going to pay? Sometimes you have to come up with a subtotal called net accounts receivable. Net accounts receivable means nothing more than it's the accounts receivable less the allowance balance. So net receivables, receivables less the allowance. So that's a bit of an overview on accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful accounts.